Okay, the meeting is officially open. We have a quorum. Um, the first thing on the agenda after that was um, approval of the agenda. So has everybody had, a yes? Marianne, you need to read the remote meeting script. Oh my God, I don't have that. That I sent you. Uh, that's okay, I'm gonna forward you one. I just sent it to you. Okay, it has not come yet. It hasn't come yet, Taylor. Can you possibly read it? Sure. It's not in my intro yet. That's weird. It's in my, it's, it says it was sent. Not here. Marianne, why don't you take the roll call? and I will then read the rest of it. Oh, so I, now I have to do a roll call of who's here and who's not? Just of who's here for the quorum. Oh, okay. Just say uh, yes when I call your name. Allison Forsgren. Here, here and accounted for. <laughs> Vanessa Larrabee. Jude Perkins. Jude, are you here? Unmute, Jude. <laughs> Hello, Jude. <laughs> Jude, we're having trouble hearing you. Jude, could you maybe give a thumbs up? Okay. And the iPhone's gonna. Did you get a thumbs up, Taylor? I saw it, yes. Okay. Kendra Lockley. Yes. Diane Flaherty. Here. Linda Williams. Susie Spring. Mary Ann Easley. Okay, that's five people. Okay, and I'll confirm that Taylor and Laura are here as well, and I'm going to read the rest of the remote meeting script on Mary Ann's behalf. Thank you. Good afternoon. This open meeting of the Council on Aging is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order on March 12th, 2020, due to the state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of COVID-19, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend meetings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order, which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation and such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment if anyone from the public chooses to join us. For this meeting, the Council on Aging is convening by video conference via Zoom app as posted by the town's website identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that all attendees are participating by a video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and to take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the report recording. All supporting materials that have been provided members are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless our chair, Marianne Easley, who is not me, um, notes otherwise. 
the same ground rules apply as if Marianne were reading this, we're going to turn to the first item on the agenda. And please remember that the chair will introduce each speaker and questions should be directed through the chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, Taylor. It has next now been into my in tray, but you did a great job. <laughs> for next time. <laughs> Um, okay, as I said, the next thing on the agenda is the approval of the agenda, which everyone should have gotten in advance from Laura. So um, can I hear a motion uh, for approval of the agenda? So moved. Well, that's Linda, who has appeared. And a second to the approval of the agenda. I second it. Allison. Thank you. All those in favor? Actually, Can't I do probably it. should put down the list. You to, uh, yeah, you got to do it by roll call. Okay. Uh, Allison? Yes. Vanessa is not here. Jude Perkins? Put your thumb up, Jude. He's on mute. Thumb up, Jude? Yes, yes, yes. I've got it. Kendra yes. Lockley? Kendra? She's on mute. You're on mute. Yes. <laughs> Diane Flaherty. Yes. Linda. Wait. Yes. Susie is not here. Marianne Easley. Yes. Okay. Thank you all. The next thing on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of our last meeting, which was July 4, 1st. Um, we have not received those minutes from Vanessa. And actually I'm concerned because we haven't received minutes from many of the last meetings and Vanessa is not here. So um, I'm gonna contact her um, about this because it is a problem. Since we're a, a public body, we should be uh, posting our minutes for anybody who's interested. So I'm gonna have to check that agenda item. Um, on to the next item on the agenda, which is the election of officers. The town has asked that we have regular elections of officers and that we go ahead at the first meeting possible to- um, Mary Ann, sorry, yes. because, sorry to interrupt, but because Vanessa's, because Vanessa isn't here, do you want to assign someone else to take minutes for today? Are you recording, you're recording this, right? Yes, but we should still have brief, you know, written minutes. They don't have to be extensive. They just have to say who was here, what votes were taken, right. what, the, what things were discussed. We're, yeah, especially since we're voting. Okay, is there a volunteer who is willing to take the I'll motion? do it. I'll do it. Thank you, Allison. Appreciate it. I'm gonna print out the agenda so it'll be easier. So give me one. Okay. So you can, um, you don't have to wait, ready? I guess. Oh, you're ready? Um, ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> Okay, I'll just talk about the way I'm gonna go about this is um, I'm gonna first take nominations and then we'll have a vote on each of the officers and we'll start with the chair um, where people will nominate um, possibilities for the chair and then we'll vote on the chair. Then I'll take nominations for vice chair and we'll vote on vice chair and the same with secretary. I'll take nominations for the secretary and we will vote on the secretary. So, I make a nomination of Mary Ann to stay as chairman. I second, I second it. I set, heard it. <laughs> it's too late for you to get out, Mary Ann. <laughs> um, right, does anybody else want to nominate somebody for chair? Not on your life. <laughs> Another opportunity here. Okay, any discussion about this? No. In that case, um, I'll take a vote. Again, I'm gonna have to go roll call again. Um, Allison. Yes, wait, wait, wait. I just have to get my printed out there. Okay, okay so uh, Marianne won. 
Well, actually, I'm the only nominee, but I still have to go down to get people's yes or no. Oh, yeah. Okay, Vanessa, not here. Uh, Jude, yes. thumbs up or down? Yes, I've got my uh, phone on, whatever. Kendra. Yes. Diane. Yes. Linda. Yes. Susie's not here. Marianne, I'll vote for myself. Okay, Marianne is reinstated as chair. Uh, now we'll have a, uh, nominations for vice chair. Allison. Second. Okay, is there anybody else who'd like to make a nomination for vice chair? Any discussion? I don't Not really want to do it, but, but, I, but I don't want to be the secretary either. <laughs> you guys be vice chair then. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go down the list again for votes. Um, Allison. Yes. Jude. Yes. Kendra. Yes. Diane. Yes. Linda. Yes. Marianne, yes. Okay, Allison, you remain as vice chair. And thank you very much. Much now appreciated. Let's not all You're rush in there to be secretary. Let's not all jump on the secretary. <laughs> <laughs> Any nominations now for secretary? I'm not going to be Diane. Oh. She's not at all the meetings, though. Diane's busy right now, right, Diane? Well, everyone's busy, I think. Yeah. What? I don't know what happened this summer. Diane, you're being nominated for secretary. Are Which there any other have... nominations? Which means you have to do the minutes, Diane. <laughs> I'm well aware. <laughs> Is there any discussion? Nope. Terrific. I'm going to go down the list again. Those who uh, want. Oh, sorry. Did yes, we get no? a second? On Diane's Second. nomination. Second. Second. Thank you. Okay, now your vote, uh, yes or no, Allison? Yes. Jude? Yes. Kendra? Yes. Diane? Yes. Linda? Yes. Marianne, yes. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate your willingness to do that, Diane. Thank you. All right, back to the agenda. Um, the next thing on the agenda is the Cure Alzheimer's um, presentation. And this is uh, Allison's baby, so I'm going to let you take it away. Um, so back when, I think we talked about this at the last meeting, but if you weren't there, um, someone was in touch with me, a woman named Marguerite Davis, whose husband is Norwood Davis, and he has Alzheimer's. Um, she's been involved, they've been involved um, in clinical trials and testings and, and we're able to, uh, we were going to bring this guy here, this guy named Ron Peterson, who is a famous researcher from Mayo Clinic in Minnesota. So he was going to come when we were doing the year of the senior, but now he's going to do a Zoom call inst instead. So um, Cure Alzheimer's, which is a group who funds research on Alzheimer's is sort of putting the bill, whatever the bill is. Um, and we were asked to be supporters and are listed on the invitation. Um, the Council on Aging, the Council on Aging, the Council on Aging, the Salt Marsh, the NCEA, and Friends of Our Island Home. So that invitation is going to go out. Um, I'm going to do my my lists for Dementia Friendly, Nantucket, and Friends of Our Island Home after this meeting, because I wanted you guys to hear it first. And um, Marguerite Davis, and then oh, the woman who's a co-founder, lives out in Pocomo. I can't remember her name right now, but you'll see it on the invitation. They're sending it to all of their friends and club members, and... We hope to get about uh, 50 people, but that will get more than that. We can get a, you know, it's an unlimited number of people who can show up. So it's, it, it is a fundraiser for Cure, All, Cure Alzheimer's. Um, they aren't expecting to get money from the Nantucket people. They're expecting to get money from some of the other big wigs that these ladies are inviting to the show. Oh, I shouldn't say that on this thing, should I? Um, but so when you when you um, 
accept the invitation, you'll get a, a you'll get a code to join a meeting that is not like a Zoom meeting because it's not you don't go back and forth. You just get a, a ticket to like a lecture, and it's going to be the twenty sixth of August between five and six p.m. I think, but it should be really interesting. I hope you guys all all show up. Um, it's positive news about Alzheimer's. So. Um, can anyone screen share the invitation so people will recognize it when it comes in or who can you share if you send it to me i can put it on the, up on the facebook and nantucket community i'll be well you'll get it for sure i think you're on my you're on one of my friends of our island homer i'll make sure that you get it okay. and i can't try to mute it yes let me pull that up and then share my i think i can share my screen even though i the, who is the host is somewhat confusing right now. <laughs> Hold on one second. Um, can I actually ask, ask a question, Allison? Yes. Um, for sharing that flyer, it is not, it is too late to make it into the um, next Town of Nantucket newsletter. Um, so Laura is going to share it frequently, but we can do social media posts and have a really vibrant following right now, um, ever since COVID on our Facebook and, and Instagram. Is there um, kind of a, a message to go along with the flyer that Cure ALZ is using for their own social media posts? And if so, can I have it so that the messaging is the same across I the board? Did, I did ask the um, my contact there, and you know, theirs might be more of a push for for, um, for donations. So perhaps we should come up with our own. Okay. Would you be able to write a brief message on what you'd like it to say underneath the flyer in Facebook and Instagram? Um, well, what do you I mean? What do we think? Like a little promo for it or, you know, learn what you can do, you know, something like that. I mean, I, yeah, something catchy. Okay. I'll, um, sure. About how many words? Oh, I would say like two sentences max. Okay. Um, yep, and then you know, I'm going to send it to the hospital. But, but you know, I think Maureen Hackett is a friend of theirs, and she's a big hospital supporter. So hopefully, they'll be able to get the medical community um, involved, where that's always been a problem for for me when I'm doing this Alzheimer's stuff. So, um, but anyone else have any questions about that? I think we can all. Okay. I have a question, um, Allison, which is um, how can all of us who are on the council uh, support your efforts? Uh, well, I mean, you know, we are, instead of saying sponsors, I didn't want people to think that we were paying anything to participate in this. So we're all listed as supporters. And so if you can forward, um, you know, you see, I can't. So, um, Laura, how can you get it out to the COA members. You said that you had to redo it. Yeah, when I tried to put it into the constant contact email, it was too um, it was too long, and there's only so much space, so I could only make it as big as I could make it, and the writing is very small. Right, and the pictures are big. Yeah, well, the um, pictures, I couldn't even copy and paste. It's from there because it's in an um, PDF. I mean, I could send you it in a JPEG if you want, if that helps you. But I think if you can cut and paste, it would be nice to maybe, um, you know, we, people will be able to forward. I'm going to put it in the body of an email and send it to people on my two lists. But I can't send it to you guys as a group because you're, we're all on the same committee. I'll send it to me. Okay. And I can do that. And you can forward it to each of us. Yes. So that we can then forward it to people that we think might be interested. Correct. Okay, great. Allison. And can you all see my screen? Pardon? Can you guys see my screen? And yeah, can you, uh, can you see it? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. First class. Free it's Zoom beautiful. webinar. And so um, Phyllis Rappaport, does anyone know her? Mm. She's she's a, she's a. I think I've I think I've met her. Yeah. Somewhere along the line. Well, I I look forward to meeting her. I've been on calls with her, but not met her in person. 
um, and I probably will never, <laughs> who knows. But anyway, it's like a big deal to have a person like, um, like the speaker, I mean, he's a leading researcher in, in Alzheimer's, so it'll be great. So please come, thank you. Um, and this is Marianne, I have a suggestion for Laura. I don't know if this would work, but rather than trying to make it fit into your newsletter, is it possible for you to just send it as it is um, to everyone on your constant contact list as a separate independent message? It would still have to go into constant contact and it will only get so big. I sent a test to you, Allison. Yeah, I haven't, I've been crazy. So I, what I did was I just recreated it in constant contact. Um, with the, the same font, the same colors, except, you know, exactly the same. I just don't have the pictures and I don't have the OIH logo to put on because I can't take it off of the PDF. I can send it to you, but um, just look at that, Allison. It looks pretty much the same. It's not exact, but the font is bigger and we're dealing, I mean, I couldn't even read it. And so it just needed to be bigger. So uh, so and let can me know. You go to PDF um, edit and, and edit it that way. If you um, copy and paste it onto your desktop and put and then edit from there. Well, um, you know, Laura, it's maybe the same thing, isn't it? And so yeah. does so. So is that does the NCEA have a an email list? NCEA, no, oh, they have a mailing list. Bob has a list. Because it would be great if, if they could send it out to their list. Um, Marianne, yeah, like they have corporate members. Yeah, yeah I, we can make sure that Bob, who's their secretary, gets it and is knows okay. what he can do with it. I, I can work with you on that, Alice. Okay, great, perfect. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Um, um, could it be put up on the town's website? Is a click here. I can also put it is is on um, network of care, the human services. Great, yeah. And I'll try and find a format that it would. It's so long, but I can try and I can work with the, the town's you know social media website person and get it up at least on the Salt Marsh page. Yeah, and 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 if it can if it can be shortened at all, I mean. Yeah, we can chop the bottom off if it's not working. Yeah, you know it's you know those Absolutely. big images. Hopefully, people will get it more more than one. So they're, they're scheduling it to go out three times to their lists. Um, I, I'm probably going to send it to my list twice. So, um, but I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be great. And I assume that you're encouraging all of us to attend. Oh, I think it should be mandatory, but can I say <laughs> that? <laughs> That's the weight of the vice chair. <laughs> What's the date again that the invite went so fast? It's, it's the 26th. Thank you. Any other uh, questions or comments on this for Allison? Was that from five to six on the 26th? Um, I'm pretty sure I'm just, um, Taylor, can you see? I don't have that up. Yes, that's correct. It's, it's, it starts at five on Wednesday, the 26th. There's no Zoom. Time. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Anything else before we move on? Great. I'm looking forward to it. It sounds like a terrific event. And I looked up yeah. this guy on the internet. He is famous. So yeah, should be good. Um, the next thing on the agenda is the subject of the 2020 Senior Man and Senior Woman of the Year. And at our last meeting in July, Joe Aguirre attended and he made a big push for us to go ahead and take nominations for 2020 and not let a year go by in which we don't recognize uh, two people. Um, but I told him I thought we should have a discussion of this at our meeting, which is today, and then um, have an actual vote on whether we should go ahead with this in 2020. So my, uh, only, my only comment about that, I was thinking about that, is that um, our two current uh, king and queen, shall we say, um, were sort of, their reign was sort of truncated. Yeah, they and didn't I, get to do anything. Oh, carry them on for another year or 
I, I just felt really bad for those guys. Anybody else have any comments about this? Maybe they could tag team with the, with the two new ones if we decide that that's what we want to do. I mean, do we think people, people might be more dialed in to participate now that they're all, you know, filling out forms online. So it could be um, a great way to get more participation than before, or maybe we should talk about this after the technology report. <laughs> Well, I'm going to throw my two cents in here. Um, I don't think it's a good idea for two reasons. One is I think whoever gets nominated will be cheated because yeah. they'll probably get some coverage in the Inquirer and Mirror and other, um, the usual um, suspects yeah. in terms of coverage. But there's not going to be much else going on for the rest of the year. And the second thing is I think that um, events like this in light of COVID just really don't stack up against the fact that people are getting sick and people are dying. Yeah. And the last week in Massachusetts has not been good. The trend in Massachusetts is now going back to um, more cases um, and probably a few more deaths. I think they've got deaths a little more, better under control. But um, I just feel like we're better off um, just skipping one year and uh, I think it's a good idea to extend the year for the two current people, if there's any way to do that. Um, I know Jeanette is probably available to do anything that we might like her to do, although I'm not sure that Peter is because of his health. But that's just my two cents. So everybody else can. Well, I agree with you. I agree with you. That's why I, I brought that up. I think it's pretty late. Like if we started it in August and I mean, how long is the tenure going to be if we don't get a, you know, if we don't get someone until September or October? Do they go what are they going to do? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, that's a good question. If you do it, it, let's say you name them in early October, is there rain then over when it normally would be? Or do we shift the time? They would get, yeah, they would not get a full year. I see what you're saying. I think maybe we should recognize that we aren't doing it this year and because we'd like to see our recipients be able to participate because that's why they were nominated and won the you know one so it'd be nice to get uh, acknowledge that we aren't doing it instead of just letting it slide but i don't think it's the right time to celebrate I, I, a volunteer I think we should make this to the year that we recognize all seniors since we do recognize it is the year of the senior. Maybe either keep um, Jeanette and Peter in there or recognize all seniors and then go senior of the year next year. Does somebody want to make a motion regarding this so that we can actually vote? I mean, okay. Go. You'll say it better, I'm sure. Um, um, <clears throat> I move that we um, postpone that that we uh, recognize there are no seniors of the year for 2020 due to the co coronavirus, and thank all the and thank all the senior volunteers. Um, Forget that. Does that all does that extend the uh, reign of the two people that are there? Okay, yeah. So okay. recognize that there that there will be no senior of the year for 2020, and the current. Um, the guy that that there won't be a senior record. I mean, just just carry on with the, our senior. This you know, recognizing our senior Peter again, or you know. To carry yeah, on. I'd rather like no senior of, of 2020. Just think it sounds sounds okay. sad. Yeah. So recognize that the seniors of the year will remain. Yeah. Well, uh, due to the COVID, that we feel that um, due to the uns you know the weird circumstances that are happening today in our world, that we're going to carry on with. 
extend our, you know, our two designated seniors for 2020. So we recognize that the seniors of the year for 2020 will continue their what? The 2019 the seniors will continue. Seniors seniors will continue through 2020. Um, the Council, the Nintendo Council on Aging um, recognizes that the seniors of the year, Peter Richards and whatever her name is, will continue yeah. their, Jeanette. Yeah, Jeanette, will, will continue their, not rain, what do we say instead of rain? Tenure. Tenure. Through 2020. So. Oh, we, that we wish to have Jeanette and Peter um, continue their tenure as our as representative of our senior of the seniors of the year, twenty twenty. Okay, the, the NCOA recognizes seniors of the year Peter and Jeanette, and they will continue their tenure throughout twenty twenty. <clears throat> yes, you know. It, but yeah, let's vote on it. I might sweeten it up a little bit, but that's the. But I would I would add due to the coronavirus, yeah, uh, impact on the island community. Yeah, I mean, yeah, just due to the, you know. Okay. Yep. Yep. It does increase the likelihood, you know, that they'll get to do something at some point, hopefully. Completely <laughs> Well, if we ask the uh, select board to move the senior of the, the, the year of the senior to 2021, perhaps we can make a bigger deal out of it in 2021. Yeah. But I don't know that that has to be part of this motion. That wouldn't be part of the motion. That would just be something right. that's our objective. Right. All right, are we ready to vote? Because I have to go item person by person. Okay, Allison, yes or no? Yes. Jude? Yes. Kendra? Yes. Diane? Yes. Linda? Yes. Marianne, yes. So we have it it's unanimous. So far, all of the votes have been unanimous, right? Yes. That's correct. I've made most of the motions. Oh, I forgot to write that down. Ugh. Yeah, you got to do that. I've made most of the motions. I think Jude has seconded almost every one of them. Well, I think that Joe uh, Gear is going to be disappointed, but um, I think there's good rationale for this, to tell you the truth. It's too, it's too half fast and it's too late. You know, and everybody's mind is not on something like this. We're all still very worried about um, all the aspects of COVID nineteen. Yeah. So we've had two two votes, right? Well, we had chairman, and we had vice chairman, and we had secretary. Those are votes. Yes, we. Oh, uh, I made the motion for chairman and vice chairman. And I made the motion for Diane. Yes, and then I seconded that. So, Ugh. okay, you can always watch it back a second time. Oh, right. <clears throat> okay. Okay, the next item is um, Taylor and an update on uh, the pandemic impact on Nantucket seniors. Well, obviously it remains huge in terms of, you know, isolation, which is what we tell uh, seniors not to do. And unfortunately is what they um, need to do. So um, just so you all are aware, you may, I may have mentioned at the last meeting, we did cancel the senior tax work off program um, for this year. Obviously it was suspended when office closures happened. Um, but though 
um, town offices are reopen. Um, there's capacity restrictions on the number of employees that are allowed in there. And um, most are still not open to the public, though a few are, for example, um, passports. So we um, have decided to, that program would normally end November 30th for this um, fiscal year. And we've decided to suspend it um, through, through that with a decision um, on next year um, forthcoming that we'll have to make a decision on within the next um, month or so if we were to stay um, on target. So that's very sad to do because um, the seniors that volunteer for the town, many of whom I supervised when I was at our island home, bring so much um, to the offices and the, and the program. So um, that was a very, that was a very hard one and weird to be new in this role <laughs> and being um, the person who had to cancel that. I was really looking forward to seeing um, the other side of it. So a decision will be made on next year within the next couple of months. How many people participate in that? Um, this year it was 21. Oh, so it's, it's substantial. Um, it's a really, really, really fantastic program. Um, so direct referrals that I've um, you know, made through human services for years have included things like seasonal residents who have come back and weren't as aware of available resources um, here for things like um, grocery pickup and things like that. So people calling the office saying, hey, if I'm not comfortable going to the grocery store, um, what's available to me? And then also um, referrals um, to Meals on Wheels, which of course Laura helped with um, too and I, um, helped as well as we wound down the senior meals program, making sure everyone um, that really needed that assistance um, that we had a plan for. So I feel very comfortable with kind of where everyone landed. And I think I mentioned in the last meeting that assuming um, the need and funding are available um, in the fall, um, all parties involved are very interested in resuming. Um, meal delivery if we if we can. It was just such a um, fantastic program. Um, Laura has done an amazing job um, pivoting to virtual activities. She's just been fantastic and attendance is actually really good. Um, she can talk about that more. And then Ginny continues to do um, wellness checks on all of our participants. God bless her. She spends <laughs> a lot of time on the phone. So um, we're still connected to everybody, but uh, of course it's not the same. Um, I spoke last time about how I was um, on the Massachusetts Council on Aging Senior Center reopening task force advisory committee, <laughs> mouthful, and that group has finished its um, work and I stay in touch with all of them um, via a group email. Not everyone um, replies all the time. I about a week and a half ago, most recently reached out to everyone asking how, how people were doing with either virtual or more of it moving toward a small reopening. I am aware that one of them has reopened for very small group activities, but when I wrote to her, wrote to the director asking how it was going, she has not um, replied to me yet. So I don't know if they have stayed open or how that's going. Everyone else who responded um, is on all virtual and won't consider re reopening for in-person um, until town offices in general are reopened, kind of using that as like a, a benchmark where, okay, if all the other town offices are opening, we might open, you know, a couple to a few weeks um, behind that. So that's a metric that, um, at least a couple other of other places off island are using and um, Roberto the health director and I um, touch base on it you know often kind of where we're at and when we are given the green light to do anything in person within salt marsh that's a board of health decision so that will come from from them not me and Laura so for now it's all it's all virtual with no set date for a reopening are there things that we could do that are not in the salt marsh? Like, could there be a drive-in movie night or could we somehow utilize some of the things that businesses have set up that are successful and offer them to the seniors? 
The drive-in movie has been sold out for two months, right up through Labor Day, every single show. Well, after Labor Day. They haven't posted anything yet, but my understanding last week was they were going to try to keep going through the fall, but nothing has been posted after that. That's yeah. a nice idea, like offer tickets to kind of yeah. Yeah, a couple of events, like stay in your car. Yeah. It's like $30 a, a car, I think. Yeah, but you know, many you know, seniors probably don't aren't going to be doubling up, <laughs> or <laughs> you know. So yeah, but things like that, if you know, to get out, I feel so bad. Um, yeah, because I couldn't use the um, the uh, theater ticket thing that we sort of got started up again. Right. Yeah, I I think that's a beautiful idea. It would be expensive, but. I think that's a fantastic idea. That's very safe if you stay in your car. <clears throat> oh, I'm going to get somebody to underwrite that also because it's, <clears throat> everybody knows that the it's very difficult for seniors to be isolated at home. And if it gets them out of the house, somebody might want to think that was a great idea and fund at least some people getting out of the house. We just have, we don't have a program yet where we know where it's going after Labor Day. And, and we can't, for instance, ask Joe Hale if he will split the cost of a car with NCEA or something like that. I mean, I mean that would yeah. be ideal as if they could offer five, you know, five cars a week or something and work on a partnership basis. I mean, they're losing money as well, but um, who knows? And so what about the Boys and Girls Club? Will they um, reopen for walking and stuff maybe in the fall? We don't know. They got the camp open, but as you could see, the camp is in pods. That's what yeah, it's all outside. Are. I don't believe they're doing anything outside currently. I think they cancel when it's raining or too hot. Yeah. But you know that the the walking program was was really popular. I mean, when you know when and if that opens up, I mean, would the would Roberto have to give that the thumbs up or? That, Laura, can you step in here? Because that's not at the walking isn't actually our program, correct? No, it's not. It's through the Boys and Girls Club. Nancy Swain just kind of gets it going every year, but that's a Boys and Girls Club. Okay. So you could talk to them about it. So that wouldn't fall under the purview of the Mass COA guidance that for anything in Salt Marsh, we need Board of Health approval. They would, you know, follow their own guidance. We'll come up with things that are outside of the Salt Marsh Center. I That's have an idea too. now that I can unmute. Um, why don't we give coupons for ice cream at the pharmacy? Everybody goes there to pick up their prescriptions and they could sit on a bench and watch people go by and get a free ice cream. Somehow send one to every senior on the salt marsh. Some will use them, some will. You gotta talk to Patrick about that. Well, we'd have to pay him. Yeah, he does a lot of uh, donations. Does a lot. Yeah. Uh, this is Marianne. I might be the only real senior in this group, but I would not want to sit outside on those benches because nope. it's very crowded. Yep. And as a senior, I, if I have my mask off to eat my ice cream cone, that's the last thing I want to do is be in that crowd. I just walked through it yesterday and it's, it really freaked me out even to walk through it. Because everybody's waiting in line for lemon press and yep. it's, it is a big crowd there. Yeah, town's been pretty crazy. I, I'm wondering if there's any, any walking we can do on even the new trails that um, have been set up and just have people buddy up with, you know, sign up to buddy up with somebody, walk six feet apart with their um, masks on because that's what I've been doing with a you know I choose a friend we go out together we walk six feet apart with our masks on but and then we stop someplace and uh, we sit six feet apart and have a conversation so that would be a way for people to get out and get some exercise and it's outdoors one of the things that they've said about exercise and I think it's probably even more doubly so for older people is that wearing a mask while exercising and riding a bike and things like that or something you're not supposed to wear the mask if you're exercising so some people walking 10 feet is an exercise so 
I, yeah. I'm kind of, you know, we can say that there are trails out there if you're, if you want to do it, but they've also said don't wear a mask when you're exercising, specifically exercising. Right. Um, can I, sorry, just sorry to interrupt, but to touch back on doing um, exercise classes outdoors at Salt Marsh, Roberto and I have talked about that too, and we think that's a great idea for the fall, um, but that it's too hot right now, yeah. and that it would be safe or appropriate to start that until it's significantly um, cooled, but we do have one exercise instructor in particular that would really like to do in-person outside at salt marsh so that might be our first group thing on the property but it does need to wait till it's um a lot less hot <laughs> that's great any other suggestions or uh conversation about this topic i have one um the labyrinth i have not been there but i heard it's very nice it's beyond the playground the land bank playground and I've been many times it is really nice but you know what the, the whole but the whole labyrinth you pass each other so the the whole theory behind it I put it in, but yeah I want okay I mean if it's just one person or you walk with somebody but um again it's really it's all it's contained in a small circle and you just walk 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 okay not sure if it would be COVID friendly Gotcha. Um, one last thing. I am presenting at the uh, Rotary next week, um, primarily focused on a COVID education um, table that I am in charge of, but I'll of course be um, talking about um, the virtual activities that Salt Marsh is offering and maybe doing some recruitment for new um, participants. I think a lot of Rotary members are seniors. Um, and Laura put together um, kind of like a one pager on what we're offering virtually right now. And so hopefully people, more people will sign up or at least get on constant contact. So I will. And, and Taylor, is it possible for you to mention the Alzheimer's event on August 26th to that Absolutely. crowd? <laughs> Absolutely. I'll, I will actually print out flyers. I might have to chop the bottom um, and bring them. I'm going to see if they can do something that's a little more print friendly, you know, understanding that, you know, the issues, if they would prefer to put something out that might be more functional for Laura, so. Um, that would be awesome. Yeah. yeah, if they could do like an eight by 11 that I could distribute at that, that would be you know, awesome. I actually asked if they could do some postcards so the NC, and maybe the NCEA would, would, could mail them. But you know, it would be nice to have something to give people. Also, you could leave those at the visitor center if you have postcards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else for Taylor before we move on to uh, Laura? And so as far as notes for that, since it's Taylor's report, I don't have to, to do any detailed notes on that, right? No. no. Okay. Thank you, Taylor. <laughs> you can just say that, that Taylor gave her um, report. Thanks, Taylor. Uh, Laura. So a couple of things just to keep on the same subject. With that Alzheimer's thing, we can advertise at the chamber because NCEA is a chamber member. Great. Good. So if I, if you, they might be, well, they use constant contact too. So if we could get something that um, would fit into there better, that would be great. Mm -hmm. um, one other thing that other senior centers are doing is they're doing drive through ice cream. So if we could get the NCEA to pay for some sort of ice cream and then the seniors just come in and drive through the salt marsh and pick up an ice cream. Maybe, maybe the ice social distancing, they're in their car. The traffic maybe. might, you know, the traffic might be a little tense, but if you want an ice cream, you'll deal. So that's a maybe, thought. Maybe the ice cream truck could meet at the salt marsh. Yeah, the those ice cream are really expensive. It's five bucks a whack. Oh, okay. You live I down mean, my street. If we had something, if NCEA paid for it. Yeah. You know, that's- This guy um, lives down my street, so I couldn't understand why I would, every once in a while, would hear the music that came out of the ice cream truck things. I thought I was going crazy until he went by me yesterday with the music <laughs> that we used to listen to as kids going, yeah. and I thought I just freaked out. 
It's great. They go by my house twice a week, but it's expensive. If you know, you bought something in bulk, you know, you'd have to think about it. Yeah. So, so would it be healthy if, if we bought gallons of ice cream and served it? Is there a way to do that? That's, you know, I don't think you'll let us do that under the pandemic. Because we're in, we're in direct contact with a food. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, um, how are the other? You can do individual, which I can get, um, for, you know, wholesale. The I little mean, things. The truck, you know, is five and five dollars a piece, and he he only pays seventy five cents for each piece. So mm -hmm. I can get the exact same things he's ordering, and we could do that. I mean, if they were individually wrapped, you can sell. You can give those. Away. Sounds fun. Yeah. How cool is that? I don't know. It's so, easy. How do, so uh, um, how do we do that? Well, when do you want it? And I mean, I can order the ice cream any time and we get, just have to figure out what kind you want. And I have the deep freeze here, so I can keep them until we need them. And, and then we put it up. And then we get a cooler and we have people drive through the salt marsh and we pass them a, an ice cream sandwich or a, or a, yeah, I mean, I think that would be, yeah, let's like do that or, yeah, I think yeah, that- Yeah, they do a little drive around. So what time and what day and should we do it like once a week for three, four weeks or something? Let's, and what's it gonna cost? Easier to figure out the logistics by, do you think it might be easier to figure out the logistics via email? I know it can't be like a group email with, all of you responding to each other, but like a BCC from Laura to figure out like dates, times. Well, who wants to put that together then? Well, to make it easier, I should just do the whole thing because oh, I work great. there. <laughs> yeah, Laura, it's, a, it's an act, it's a program, Laura should just do it. <laughs> right, it's a, so, it, you know, and then Ginny and I would, you know, we do it at a time where we're not Zooming sometime in the afternoon and, um, you know, we'll just see everybody, we'll see somebody drive by and run out and okay. and or just okay. order. We'll, and it's a nice way to say hello to everybody. Exactly. If they're driving through to get mail or something. Exactly. So if you want to do it. So would you do, would they come by, I mean, anytime they wanted to come by or is it you're going to do they like easily could because we're here, but it might be more fun if you, I don't know, if you did it between two and four. So maybe you'll, you'll be able to, maybe they'll sit in the parking lot and have their ice cream and they'll sit next, they'll be in the next car next to somebody oh. they know and they could wave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if we want to do it all day, you know, just start no, 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 no. It'd be like I Wednesdays. Mondays or my, Wednesdays or something. Any afternoon, Ginny and I aren't Zooming, well, not any, but the majority of the afternoons are free. So we could just pick what's more convenient for us because right. we're working here <laughs> and just do it four times a week or four times a month or for four, four times. And Kendra just think that maybe, I don't know, we'll get 20, 30 people in one day. And you still, you guys have the freezer there. We have the freezer here. We have a side by side. So that would, I mean, I could just bring it down um, that day. You know, they'd be solid and bring them down in the cooler and then just um, give them to you, you know. But then does that become you guys doing that as opposed to the board doing that? I mean, what, how do we do this? I mean, is that? I would say that you brought it up and I had a suggestion and now it's a program at the Salt Marsh that Ginny and I will take care of. And it'll run this by Roberto, right? Because with now we're turning into a food service. Yes, I'll 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 run it by. I mean it's pretty it's pretty no contact and you're not preparing any food. Okay. As long as we're not preparing or scooping or any of that stuff. Yeah, I mean I'll I'll of course everything's obviously gonna be individually wrapped, but of course I will talk to him about it and make sure that he's comfortable with it. Yeah. I guess that he would be. Um, but hey, it's weird it's weird times. <laughs> right. So Kendra, if you could send me um, you know, kind of a list of how much it's gonna cost. Yeah. Um, and then I'll, I'll just bring it to NCEA when they have their next meeting. Will they meeting. pay for it? Well, but I'll ask them. Okay. 
because I go to these meetings, so I'll say the COA. I mean, it's not that a great idea. Right. And it's not that expensive. It, I mean, I could like a collaboration between all three, which is right. the ultimate Yahoo. Uh-huh. And you could pass out um, a flyer for the Zoom meeting or anything else you might want to. We could definitely. We could get something from maybe the health department has something, a little kit. Or the sheriff's department has a yeah. little kit, at home <laughs> hurricane survival right. suit. <laughs> awesome. So, all right. Well, I'll do that tomorrow. Um, this afternoon. Wait, what's the Wednesday? Okay, I need, it by, I need it by uh, the seventeenth of this month, and then I'll ask NCEA, and we'll go from there. Love yeah, it. because we want to do it sooner than later. Well, I, their next meeting is the 19th. Of August? Yes. But wouldn't so, we want the ice cream to be doing it? Well, just buy the ice cream. No, 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 not, I know. If okay. they I don't mean, have the okay, then Taylor and I will figure out how we're going to pay for it. Okay. But they don't get the okay. I can donate. It's not going to be that much, so. You know, so we could start it. Well, Ginny and I will look at it. We'll do, we'll do it one day after the 19th. So we'll have two weeks okay. to do okay. it. And then we could even go into September. Yep. So um, like, just like a, you know, a, a hoodie cup or do you want like a special, like you said, an ice cream sandwich? Like, can you get like four different kinds? Yeah. You know, okay. like there's, you then know, you have to they have them. the chocolate block and they have a, po a popsicle and they have Burger. the ice cream chocolate on it. And, you know, maybe four different types. And so do we have to wait do we have to wait for the NCEA? I mean, can't we, can we act? Um, I mean, if, if we're only asking, waiting because they're going to pay for it, could we do it if they weren't going to pay for it? How about I email Joe and um, maybe he'll just give me the okay right away. All right, yeah. I'll let you know. Yeah, well, he, he does have funds that are meant to be used entirely at his discretion. NCEA that I don't think need a vote. Under 500 bucks. Yeah, they were specifically okay. earmarked for whatever activities he he wanted. So I think you would probably be safe doing that. And I will talk to Roberto today. Yeah, it's summertime. We want to get the get a, get okay. people out and yep. Eat. And just let me know, Kendra, when the ice cream will arrive, and then I can schedule something. Okay. Okay. And take pictures. And take pictures. of course. <laughs> Um, so other than that, you know, we're zooming everything and, um, it's going absolutely fabulous. We now have a laptop computer from the town, um, that makes it a lot easier to be able to do that. We're getting people trickling in here and there. We have like six people for Joe's kettlebell class. Usually when he does it, he has three people. So <laughs> yoga is great. The chair yoga is fabulous. Nancy's class just they keep on trucking, they talk before, they talk after. It's it's really, it's going a lot better than I anticipated. I think it's fabulous. So we've added everybody on except for Tai Chi, which we will very shortly. If Nancy is, a, you know, Nancy Rappaport is willing to do that. And we're still doing, you know, a, a little thing with Paul Connors who likes to do a little sing-along. We have that at 3.30 today. Um, the nutritionist who's coming, she comes once a month. She's fabulous. You guys should check her out. It's like watching a cooking show. She's really, really good. Um, and that's about it. Did you so, also talk about your technology survey? Oh, the technology survey. Well, I mean, everybody can look at it. I haven't looked at it in a bit. It seems, um, you know, most people have Wi-Fi computer. There are a few that do not. Um, I, I'm not, I would have, I don't know, I might be able to look at the constant contact and find out who said, do you know somebody who needs Wi-Fi? Because otherwise, how are we going to find those people? And, and I what could, are we going to do with them when we find them? I mean, are we gonna, can we offer free Wi-Fi? I don't know. I'm just doing this because the board brought it up at their last meeting and you guys wanted it done. and. 
Yes, yeah, sorry, I didn't get back to you with any additional questions. Right. Taylor was all over it. Maybe you can ask the ice cream takers if they have any needs or if it's all well, or be like the man on the street and ask a question every day. Right, week. right. Well, you know, I think that I think that if people don't have what they need, how do we get it to them? That's what our job should they don't be. Need, how do you even know that? If they don't have yeah, technology. I mean, overwhelmingly, the people that responded indicated that they didn't have a need or didn't have an interest passed in what they were already doing. But obviously, if they're responding to a survey, that they was, have, yeah, they at least exactly. have email capability. So you would imagine that even if they don't have Wi-Fi, they do have you know, some sort of internet and can make their way through a, through a constant contact is how do you even, that's why Laura's question, actually, Laura, you came up with that question, not me. Do you know somebody um, who right. does have, you know, And then if you get ability. them Wi-Fi or if you get them a free laptop, who's going to teach them how to use it? It does require some commitment on their part and some desire on their part. You know, right. They need to stand up and say, I need this, I want this, and I'm committed to it. Um, so it would be interesting if we could find people like that, and then we could try to satisfy them. But so far, nobody stood up and said, I need this, I want it, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get techie. But it just right. hasn't happened yet. Is that something, Taylor, that can be like, I don't know, not a press release, but something in the newspaper that would be like, you know, the COA is looking for people who, and therefore would be able to I get- I think we would, I think if we did that, we would need to know what we were offering. Right, you would need the grant first. Eliciting that, so that right. it wasn't, you'd have to kind of have the answer to the problem ready to go, right. to solicit in that way. So, so doesn't Verizon or, <clears throat> I thought that the internet companies were offering, like to school students, um, reduced or free Wi-Fi access. Um, I think that there are computers available. Didn't, I think Allie at Our Island Home got some computers through a program for seniors. So, um, <clears throat> I mean. Ask her how she did it. Okay. And are the seniors at the Island Home using them? Yeah, they they Zoom and they talk to their, families and you know they're they're pretty dialed in there and are doing really well <clears throat> so yeah laura maybe you and Allie can can connect on um how she accomplished that and and to what to and to what level she's assisting them or how she went about teaching them i would right. guess it's pretty heavy-handed assistance <laughs> yeah it's pretty hard. hands on you know, yeah. we're not open to the public, so it's not like people can come down here and we can give them a class on how to uh, use my, At my father's nursing home, they brought this up, but he's, he's deaf and hard of hearing, so unless they give him his hearing aids, we can't do it. But they have um, tablets on his Alzheimer's floor, his dementia floor, and they have set it up for all those people where they give, they put the tablet in front of them and they communicate with their families because nobody's been allowed in his nursing home for like five months now. So it is very effective because you can see each other's faces. And so does anyone know anyone? They set it up for them. Does anyone know anyone at, at the school who could talk about the people who couldn't afford internet access and how and what entity gave it to them? I don't have any contacts in the public school system. But, well, but they the, did it. Yeah, I'm but sure, yeah, Laura, I also the privacy factor. You know, the, the, you can't, they're not going to tell you who has, who's gotten it. I mean, they did do it, but they're not going to tell you. The, well, right. Still, but like, but like who, who offered that? Who offered the service? So Comcast. Did it have to be a Comcast or was well, it Comcast? Comcast is one of them. All right, I'm gonna look into the service part and someone else look into the computer part. Getting the computers or the pads yeah, or, or something? Oh no, I think, um, Laura, were you gonna to talk to Allie? I will email her and ask her how she got what she did. Okay. And I'll look into Comcast and see what, what programs they offer. Because, and then could we put an ad in the paper, you know, some outreach, 
like like do the fire department people know people who are yeah know, chronically in chronically in need of everything i mean i know yeah, they a have yeah the um public safety has that uh, oh god what is the name of the program where the, the telephone the daily telephone oh, right. program for um seniors okay. who, who live alone that would be a great place um, to ask them to help if they have anyone identified who I, th I think will need, I think will need help and that these folks will not self-identify right. and that going the route of asking public safety, um, maybe Tish at the homestead, um, Ella at Landmark, um, Wendy at um, Academy Hill, if they have anybody identified that could use this sort of help. I can tell you what type of help we can offer. Uh, Taylor, this is Mary Ann. Um, when this came up much earlier, maybe eight months ago, I contacted those people and all of them said, everybody who has Wi-Fi, who wants Wi-Fi has it, and everybody okay. who has a computer uh, has one. That was incorrect because I helped a friend at Landmark she was given a, a, an iPad and I, she bought Comcast and couldn't afford it. So I think that we need a better outreach than just asking people because, you know, it should be free for seniors. It, people shouldn't have to buy internet. Didn't Even we bring this up last year about the yeah. landlord house should have provided Wi-Fi to I, all the people living in it? What happened I've to that? I've been talking about this for years. Yeah, what happened to that? We started this up last year. No, n nobody needs it. It was, you know, um, and now when everybody I, needs it. It's when I contacted to have, those, uh, the, the people who run each of those facilities, they told me what I just said. Everybody who wants it has it. That was their response, and they were pretty irritated that I was asking. Well, now everybody needs as far, it. As far as people deserving free access, there are so many people in the United States of America of all they ages who do all. not have access. So yeah. the fact that making it free to seniors is not going to happen generally yeah it should be free to everybody yeah but <laughs> uh, that's not the society we live in well i also, agree with you that at this point internet is infrastructure it's like a highway you need it to to do anything um but i don't i i also agree with marianna that it's not well, like free I, I want free health care before i want free wi-fi access exactly <laughs> ain't gonna happen <laughs> right um, all right, so, are we, so do we still want to offer this to people? Are we still going to try to reach out to people who, who, who may need it and don't have it? Well, does that mean that we're going to underwrite it? Because it's not going to come free and from Comcast or Verizon. I think, it, I think it will for people who need it. I mean, they provided it to school children who didn't have internet at home so they could do their homework. So why um, Nantucket or wider than Nantucket? Because it, there are school children all over the United States who can't get it. I think we're talking about Nantucket. Yeah, I, I, don't I think, think we have Fios here, guys. Do we have Fios here? I don't think so. No. All right, then we're stuck with Comcast. Right. I don't know why we don't have Fios. I think the first step is kind of the information gathering of okay, if we if we were to get you know tablets for for people you know what would that look like where would that come from how much would it cost and if there is a cost who would pay for it and then just the resource of being able to refer people for reduced internet access and so if we could write a grant for perhaps 10 you know or else look at it as a limited resource right now if 10 people needed it we could provide it then we could work backwards. I applaud you for doing that, Allison. <laughs> All right, I'll look into the Comcast Vios part. Um, and then if someone can look into where computers would come from, maybe we can put together, um, put together well, something. Did, where did, um, who was it, Allie, somebody that you said had gotten? At Allie at, at Our Island Home. Yes, Laura's gonna speak with her. And look and find out where she got the, the pet tablet, so. You know, or, you know, we could even ask people to donate them if, well, no, we can't, I guess, but I mean, I've got an iPad I could donate. So, uh, but that's just, let's work on this first. Enough.
Any other questions or comments for Laura? Good job, Laura. Yeah, excellent. Under the circumstances, fabulous. Yeah, no, it's great. Um, as far as our agenda, I added other business just in case there was anything else that uh, would come up. So if there is anything else, uh, now's the time. Otherwise, I'm going to ask somebody to make a motion to adjourn. So moved. I'll second it. Um, all in favor, I guess I no, have to go no, down the list. No, we got to roll call it. I'm doing all that. Votes have to roll call. Pain in the butt that this is. Uh, Allison? Yes. Jude. Yes. Kendra. Yes. Diane. Yes. Linda. Yes. Marianne. Yes. So again, we're unanimous. Great job, Chairman. And so, uh, thank you, everyone. Thank so you, everybody. Email these notes to somebody. What, what do I do with these? Type them up and email them to uh, Taylor. To oh. Taylor. Yeah. Just simple. Laura. Laura Taylor. Or Laura or both. Okay. Yeah, very simple. Okay, very simple. Very Thank simple. you so much, everybody. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye. See you on the 26th. Jude, I like your hair. <laughs>